Hi folks, welcome back to Nuts number two, which is news, updates, thoughts, and stuff. We're going to do things a little bit differently this time, and I'm going to talk about a few things while going for a hike through our property. We've had several people ask us about giving a tour around our dome and the rest of the property, so we're going to try that out. So next to the dome we have a small opening where we plant some fruit trees each year. We've been slowly expanding that. We have some blueberries, pears, peaches, apples, and some raspberries. This area leads up to a roadway that accesses some of our other fields that we have up in the back, so we're going to hike up that way. So we're also trying out a new camera that I just purchased with a wireless mic system. So you'll have to also bear with us while we experiment and get it tuned in properly. Plus my daughter's doing all the recording today, so hopefully it's not too shaky. This roadway is a couple thousand feet long and it bisects through our property. The roadway bed is actually made up of all the rocks that come out of the fields over time and it's very helpful to keep everything from eroding away and supports the trucks as they come in and out with all the silage. So this is our first field that has uh, timothy and some clover in it and it's usually cut up for silage and we'll come back to that later on um, on the back side of our trail. And along the rest of this path, uh, we cross a small wetlands and it will come out into a cornfield. We have no shortage of deer on our property. Don't move. So as we're hiking through the cornfield, uh, just a little bit of news, I'll be speaking at the Aquaponic Association Conference in Tucson later this month, which is September 20th to the 22nd. And I'll be talking about rocket mass heaters in one presentation. And then in a second presentation, I'll be talking about going off grid and running solar. So the corn's ready for harvest, they should be coming through and cutting it in the next uh, week or so. Oh, finally, the other side. So we have a couple of tree stands set up on the property. I have some friends that like to go hunting, so I let them hunt here. Uh, mostly for deer and they do some turkey hunting here too. I'm pretty sure this is some bear scat. There, when we were walking through the cornfield we saw a whole bunch of damage in there from a fairly large animal. So, so coming out of the cornfield the property drops off fairly steeply. This is almost a 45 degree angle here and this goes down about 100 feet in elevation and it ends up down at the Bigelow Brook. It's sort of hard to tell on the camera but we're standing on a deer trail. They walk diagonally across this steep hill and have been doing it for who knows how long and it actually creates a rut in the dirt and a nice clear opening for them to hike up. So one thing I wanted to talk about is I recently had a mass death of fish in our system mainly because of a mistake that I made by unplugging our power system into the greenhouse not realizing it. The garage door came down, I had an extension cord temporarily set up and uh, it unplugged when the garage door came out and overnight it killed all my fish from lack of oxygen. So I just want to make a reminder to everybody that's probably a good idea to make sure you have some type of a backup uh, pump or air pump on your system. So the river up north comes out of Bigelow Hollow State Park. There's a couple of good sized lakes up there that are recreational use and flows down against our property and we also border against the Yale School of Forestry which is the Yale Myers Forest and that's a few thousand acres and they use that for studying 
uh, different types of forestry practices. So it's really nice having uh, them as a neighbor uh, with all that extra land around here. To the south, the Bigelow Brook, it drains into the Still River and then turns into the Natchaug River, which then heads down towards Willimannock and it feeds their watershed. There's a large reservoir down there. So I have uh, two videos that I'm currently working on. Uh, one is the chiplet maker, which I mentioned last time. And also I just built a solar food dehydrator, which is working pretty well. So I have a whole video set up for that. So now we have to hike back up the hill. It's far easier coming down, but we gotta make it back up back to the field again. There's plenty of trail cameras set up on the property too, and we see all kinds of wildlife shots from these, and occasional people wandering through the property too. So winter is right around the corner, and things are starting to cool off a little bit here. And with my recent deaths of most of the fish, I have restocked, but the system's gonna be running a lot slower than it was over the summer. So I'm gonna start pulling out some of my plants that really aren't producing very well and try to slow the system down a little bit while the fish uh, start growing a little bit more. We're back in the main cornfield, that one corner of it, and we're just gonna pass through it real quick and head along our back boundary line. Here's a, another trail cam. Just took my picture. I saw the LEDs turn on on it. Now we're coming out to our next field, which has the uh, Timothy and Clover growing in it. This field's about 10 acres, 12 acres, something like that, along with the corn field, which is about the same size. Along the edge of the fields, there's tons of conquered grapes growing. So usually every year we come out and grab the tractor and lift each other up in the bucket and reach up to get the grapes that are growing in here. Over at my cousin's farm, they have a runway and they fly ultralights out of it. So we get to see them on a regular basis flying over the property. And we get a nice treat today because I think they see us and are buzzing us. We're now at the top of the field, also known as Buell Hill. And it's one of the nicer areas of our property. And it's really neat in the Pretty good view because this is one of the taller hills in the area so it's a pretty neat place to come and just sort of hang out and watch the planes or the birds or so once we crest over the hill the, the field comes back to another set of woods and our trail head enters back into here It's interesting as you walk through this property from the fields to the woods, the woods definitely have a lot of larger rocks and you can only imagine how much work it was to clear out some of these fields 100, 150, 200 years ago when everything was just done by hand or using oxen to pull things around. You sort of take it for granted now that everything is done with excavators and backhoes where you can just pluck rocks out of the ground and move them someplace else. So in typical New England fashion, there are plenty of stone walls around here from a long, long time ago. A lot of hard work went into clearing these fields, as I said earlier. And the only place to put rocks were in stone walls, and they were quite effective at making 
boundary lines has this one. This is a property line between ours and our neighbor. And uh, for keeping your livestock in place. Here's an old tree stand for hunting. It probably hasn't been used in 30 or 40 years, I bet. And I don't think anybody should try climbing up into that thing. This little bump here is sort of a unique feature. It's a outcropping from an ancient fault line. If you check through some old fault line maps, it actually shows a nice line going through our property. I think we're far from ever having any earthquake problems around. It is a pretty neat feature to have here. I was going to show this tree while it's still standing, but it's fallen down since the last time I hiked out here. And the interesting thing, as I'm looking at it, I was going to show you the holes from the woodpeckers. Uh, this is from a pileated woodpecker. And uh, they actually make like a square hole when they're looking for bugs. But then right next to it, I happen to notice, and it may be why the tree's fallen down now, you see these four markings in here. That's from a black bear. They also dig into the tree, so we probably pushed it down and started digging in where the woodpeckers were to uh, get to some of the bugs that are in here. I think these are called Indian smoke pipes. So this is also the fall line where some old ledge sticks up out of the ground. And it's a sort of a neat geological area. So some of the power of ice, uh, there'll be cracks in these rocks and over the winter water gets down in there and then freezes and the ice will expand and it will actually break the rock apart. So if we look over next door to another crack, you can see the rock actually fell apart long ago. Another neat feature that we have on the property are a bunch of vernal pools and these are small wetlands that usually flood up in the spring and gives a spot for things like salamanders and wood frog to breed. Andiamo, our third field here which is about three acres and again it's growing timothy and clover. So that's the end of our tour. I'd like to thank you for watching Nuts number two. We'll see you soon, thanks.